So, hey, um, hello everyone. So, I am Jonathan Shamul, uh, aka Moshe Malawar, uh, on Twitter, Telegram, etc. Uh, that's just a nickname, my real name is Jonathan. Uh, I'm the founder of Aleph.im, and today we'll speak on how to deploy your Solana indexer on our network. Um, so, first and foremost, thank you very much, Solana, for like, uh, inviting us. Uh, it's a really great conference, and I'm really thrilled to be here. Um, a bit about us. So, what's Aleph.im? Uh, it's a decentralized cloud computing platform. We provide storage, as in file storage and database storage, and computing, as in, as in a serverless computing. You can think of it as something like AWS Lambda or, so, or some or similar things. So, in a nutshell, it's like a decentralized AWS, Google Cloud, or whatever cloud platform you might, use, you might, you might see. Our network is not a blockchain. Um, we don't have blocks, but we accept messages coming from blockchains. A message from a blockchain is like a private key gives you a public key, gives you an address. So if a message is signed uh, uh, by like any of the accepted ag um, address chains, it is accepted by the network. Uh, we currently accept addresses from Ethereum, Polkadot Substrate, Cosmos, Cosmos SDK, Polygon, um, like like all the EVM chains, and obviously Solana. Um, our network works with core channel nodes, which are the controllers of the network, uh, for which you need to like, have skin in the game to like, run one of these. Um, and they are currently doing a part of the storage stuff, but in the near future, everything will go toward the resource nodes. The resource nodes are those that are actually providing resources, as in storage resources, computing resources, Etc. Uh, the computing resource node will go live uh, sometimes next month, uh, and the storage resource node will go live in early 2022. So let's zoom in a bit uh, uh, on the computing resource node because, because that's what is interesting to us for the indexing part. Uh, we have two kinds of load balancing: one, one which is cloud load balancing, one which is virtual, where you ask the network to like find which VM can like, answer your request, and then on demand, uh, um, a micro virtual machine is started with your own root file system, uh, unlike your code inside. Um, your code can access IPFS, uh, all kinds of blockchain data, decentralized databases, our own database system, uh, or external sources. Uh, here for the blockchains, obviously, we are contacting Solana. Um, and for the storage, we will also support other kind of storage in the near future, like Arweave, Filecoin, etc. Um, now, about our subject today. So, what is an indexer? Uh, why would you need to index your data? Um, in general, when you talk um, when your D app accesses a website, okay, you have a front end. Your front end, we can host it uh, on IPFS, whatever. But then you need to contact RPC servers. That's cool. But then you, uh, if you have millions of users, you start hammering them. So an, in so an indexer allows you to have some kind of firewall between your users and the RPCs. Uh, because, be, uh, because the state will be stored in, um, in a database, and you can also add stuff to like, your status. You could add prices from CoinGecko, uh, status from another smart contract, whatever. And most importantly, you can have history, like trade history, transaction history, uh, price graphs, whatever. Uh, and then it replaces a centralized backend uh, here in our case, because most of the D apps do that on a centralized server. And, and, and here, we are doing it in a decentralized way. So how does our indexing work on LF.im? So uh, here we have, uh, we have zoomed in even a bit more um, inside, uh, um, inside our micro VM. So when you start your applications, it will index data from the blockchain. Like, um, like, like when you start it, it gets the current state and then goes back in time uh, to like, get history. But when you launch it, instantly it will get the current state and then go back uh, for like, historical data. It will store all this inside the, uh, inside the node local file storage, we, we, which is persisted between multiple launches of the same node. Uh, and then it will get the data out through GraphQL. 
uh, we can also have a snapshot system uh, to like to, to like restart from a previous point if we want to like get faster. Let's say your application uh, ha uh, has a spike in demand. Uh, the network will like spawn multiple instances through throughout the uh, throughout the, the whole network for you. Um, so. To like do a quick demo, we didn't release yet our full open source framework uh, for indexing for Solana. So what we will do today is to make a very simple indexer, self-contained indexer. The, uh, all the source code will be made available on our Twitter later. We, we will send the link. So we create a simple counter app, which has a value that we can increment or decrement in a D app or through a program. And we lock the state as a log inside the program, so the history is kept. And we don't have to like look at all the account state um, on, um, all over the time. So let's. Uh, whoops. So here, um, here is the code of our very simple program. Uh, we are using Anchor, obviously. Uh, uh, so so we have three functions. We create our counter, we increment our counter, and we decrement our counter. The very important part here is the counter uh, is the log that we are uh, adding, and this log is quite interesting because we will parse it later. Uh, I know that Encore is working on a, on a, um, on some kind of, of serialization uh, for the logs. So in the future, you will be able to like use the standardized um, uh, serialization. So now, uh, how do we build our indexer? Uh, when you create an indexer with um, um, with our framework. Uh, here it's self-contained, so like everything is there. But uh, normally you, you you will only have um, boilerplate code. Uh, you make a parser for the instruction. You explain um, when there is a new request that comes. How do I know what function has been called, and like what are the arguments, etc. We need to decode the data part of the transaction. Then we define the program ID, we define the logic, and we prepare the GraphQL output. So let's have a look a bit more in detail to that. So in the domain, this is where we process the transaction. Uh, so, so once we have a transaction that has been parsed, we will look into it uh, and we will parse what we had before, which was split by an equal number. So we split by it, we set a counter, and we return a state. Our state is counter timestamp. Uh, and in the process, whenever we, we receive a new transaction, we are verifying that, uh, that um, is the timestamp superior to like the previous one that we have? If yes, we set the current state. Um, so, uh, whoops, um, parsers programs. And here is how we define the parser for our program. Um, we have, we have a program name, we have the instruction code, which is the start of the data uh, um, of the transaction, uh, that we then map to like create increment, decrement. Uh, we have the instruction data layout, uh, which, which has the authority uh, uh, for the create and nothing for the increment and decrement because we have no arguments. So, uh, and, and then we explain what are the accounts that are called here and there. Again, if you are using Anchor, all this can be made way simpler. Um, Anchor on the client side. Um, then we set a schema uh, where we explain what are the constructors, etc., that we have. Uh, we have one. Uh, we have only one data type here. We, which, which, which is the pulse state, which is a counter on the timestamp. Uh, and inside our schema, we, s we say what we have. So, so, so we have two types of call in GraphQL, one which is pulse and one which is pulse history, which is the actual history on the data. Uh, and, and then we have the resolvers that like, um, that, that like get you uh, um, all the data out. So, so, so like here for, uh, for pulse, it will just get you the state. Uh, and then for the history, you have a limit, reverse, and some arguments. And then it gets inside 
uh, the whole database and get you for each transaction um, your data out. So let's try this. So I have already, uh, so I have, um, I have it already running here. I have a little script that will um, write on the smart contract and do increments and decrements. And let's have a look. So uh, here in my in my GraphQL, I do, do two queries. One which is pulse, one which is pulse history, as we have seen. So this one gets us the current state, and the other gets us like the history, and we can see all the history of the latest pulse, if I rerun it, it, it's changing in real time. We did a very simple UI that is, uh, that, uh, that is showing the current state at, uh, at the moment. So all this is in local, so it works, but it's pretty centralized so far. No, I won't upload it on the LF.im cloud right now because with the Wi-Fi uploading a whole node program, I, I'm a bit aware of the demo effect, but I uploaded it just before I came here. So, so here, in the URL, it's a very complicated URL, .lf.sh or .lf.cloud. Uh, it's two kind of domain, uh, two different load balancer that gets you toward uh, your micro VM, and we will also support in the near future um, custom domain names as well, so that your, your application on your world backend can run inside the cloud, and on, on, like, on demand it will spawn up your micro VM with your code, which is the code uh, that we have seen just now, and uh, it works. On, uh, on, on, like, this indexer is now stored on the LF.im network, so this indexer is decentralized right now. So um, a bit then about the whoops tick tick tick. So um, so um, as is, it feels like it's a bit complicated or whatever. But it's really simple because you you will just write your queries. You get a simple result out. You can get arguments, etc., and then you can do things that are much more complicated than that. And we have been working on a few other indexers, like for example, radium.info, which is an indexer uh, for the radium AMA, uh, um, AMM. Uh, and the good part with that is that you can see the, the, the world trading history. You can see all the swaps, add of liquidity, removal of the liquidity. And uh, in, in, in the same way, all this data is available as GraphQL. And then we can do queries here to get all the data out. And like all the data is, is like open and available to like the general public. So if you are doing an AM, um, if you are querying data from Solana, we, pr we, we, we will likely already have some kind of, of, uh, of, of data endpoint available for you. So, so I have shown Radium, we also have Orca um, dashboard, uh, Saber dashboard, um, like this one. Uh, and, and the one that we are pretty proud of uh, is the serum.markets dashboard. And if I don't have a demo effect because of the, um, of, uh, of the Wi-Fi, yeah, okay. So, so you can see all the data. Uh, so all this data is open. If you want, you can get all this data out. Uh, this one is available. On, uh, e this one is actually... Um, open as well, and, and, and in the same way for all this Theorem data, you can get all the tokens, uh, all the transfer, uh, you can get uh, OHLCV um, data uh, for the pairs on Serum, uh, even if they are permissioned or not, etc. So that's for, for the indexers. We are also working on indexers for a lot of other projects currently. We have a partnership with Port Finance, with whom we are building an indexer, and many more up, up and coming that will be announced in the next week and months. So thank you very much. I will perhaps, I, I still have a bit of time, so I will show you a little video that explains how the network works. The internet is broken.
flows through centralized networks controlled by just a handful of companies. But there's a change coming, a monumental shift. And at Aleph.im, we're supercharging the transition to a new decentralized era. An era that provides fully decentralized cloud storage, computing and identity services, powered by incentivized self-hosted servers. Built from the ground up, our unique architecture blends both off-chain and on-chain technologies to support an ever-growing constellation of blockchains and companies. We've built the tools that allow you to store any file of any size on our proven decentralized network. Protect your precious NFTs securely on our network for eternity with our pioneering backup DAP. Unleash the power of our decentralized virtual machines, allowing you to run DAPs in any language that can also read and write to blockchains or be triggered by off and on-chain events. Be empowered to store, build, and launch incredible things in this new era of decentralization. Join us at Aleph.im. Thank you. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we, uh, we also have a dev hub um, uh, uh, that is available. We have a lot of documentation. We have uh, tutorials coming up for the micro virtual machine as well. Uh, and, and, and you can also find us on Twitter and Telegram. And we will release all the code that has been shown before as open source uh, in the coming hours. Um, we will put it on Twitter. So thank you very much, everyone.